Hello everyone and welcome back to the Crash Course. My name is Nishant and today I'll be covering how to use GoBuilder Parts in CAD or essentially how to 3D model parts to fit GoBuilder Parts in CAD. I'll be mainly covering how to import CAD models of GoBuilder Parts so that you can use them and build with them in, in the large robot assemblies and in general how to create 3D printable parts that you can use for your robot. So the first part to working with GoBuilder or basically building anything or 3D modeling anything with Kabilda is to head over to the website. There are four main sections you really need to get acquainted with. These are structure, motions, hardware, and electronics. Electronics you don't really need to worry about until you actually built the robot. These three are the main sections you really worry about while you're actually building it. In hardware you can find your screws, threaded rods, washers, all that stuff. Basically your attachment devices. In structure you find the stuff that you use to make the main body of your robot, like the channels, the grid plates, your clamping mounts for motors, things like that. And in motion, here you can find your servos, motors, wheels, chains, gears, belts, pulleys, axles, those sorts of things. So now some of you guys might be wondering how we actually start 3D modeling with these GoBuilder parts. Well, GoBuilder is really handy in that they always provide step files, or basically CAD files, which you can use in your CAD models. They're always on the bottom of the link, you can find a download for the step file. So what you want to do for any file you want, these can be motors, wheels, gears, pulleys, belts, well not necessarily belts, belts you usually have to make yourself, but things like that. Anything really in GoBuilder, including batteries and servos, you can always find on the website as a step file. So what you want to do is just click download on it, it will download it to your files, and then it will save it as a zip file. So now that you've basically imported your part onto your computer. Now the next part is to get it onto your CAD. So in Inventor the way to do it is normally this will just look like this where you have the new section up here in the top left. There's going to be a drop down where you can just import the CAD files. Then you select them from your actual computer just like this. I have mine saved in a single location because after you start importing loads of CAD files from GoBuilder and stuff, it really adds up, so I recommend saving it in all one place so it doesn't clutter your computer. You can just click on any on your step file that you use. Normally, I would just sort by date modified. It gives you the most recent step file, which is usually the step file you've just downloaded that you want to open. So once I've done that, it will generate the geometry. So it'll usually take a little while. It shouldn't take that long, though. And there we go, I've just uploaded a rev hub to my computer. So Fusion 360 also does a similar way to this, except they don't save the step files, or they don't require a reference to the step files like Inventor does. So you can just click any step file you want and just download it without worrying about where you need to place the files themselves. They're just saved on the Fusion 360 cloud. So now that you've gotten your parts together, and you probably will get more parts than just one unless you're planning on adding on to a pre-built assembly, you can start actually will assembling your parts. So in Fusion, what you will do is you will just drag a part into the current window you have open of a separate part. This will create basically an assembly, or what we have in Fusion called an assembly, I mean Venner called an assembly, and then you can start jointing them together. In Inventor, it's sort of a different process. You have to first create an assembly, as I have done here, and then you can start importing parts one by one. So basically it just uses place function and then drag and drop them in. Fusion also has a similar thing where you can just import parts directly instead of dragging them from the side view. So just something to keep in mind. After you've gotten your parts in, you can constrain them using constrain for inventor or jointing for fusion. Fus joints are tech are more well superior to constraints as they are far more intuitive and basically more easy to use. So I recommend getting used to these since most CAD softwares use these. But essentially, once you've done that, you can just expand, 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 and you start building more parts off of it. The reason GoBuilder parts are so useful is because they fit together so well because of the unique GoBuilder pattern that they use. GoBuilder has a really good video on it, I'll link it in the description below. But essentially, they have this pattern where they do 8x8 grids, expanding grids, and 14mm holes in the center with 16mm 
circular holes. Basically, it's just very repeatable and very easy to predict, which means building is very, very, very easy. And most of the time, when you're importing parts, you can just import them directly because you're usually not going to be making edits. However, for realism, I usually make cuts and stuff because depending on what we do in person, we may need to cut off an edge or something. So it just all depends on how detailed you're planning on going with this. So now that you've started assembling or know how to assemble using the build of parts, uh, I'm going to cover how to 3D print parts around Gobilda parts. So robots using just Gobilda are can be really good, as most of you already know, probably. But the main reason my team uses 3D printed custom parts is because they just offer so much more control and just efficiency on how you build things and how much space they take up. Basically, it's just better for overall design to 3D print your own parts. However, you can definitely make really good robots using non-3D printed parts. So here I have an example of a custom part I made to fit Gobilda parts. So, uh, ignoring the outer holes to sort of go off the edge of the piece, I started with an uh, extrusion of a 60mm by 60mm cube, or square, and then I created a pattern a rectangular pattern with each dimension of 8 by 8 apart, again following that Gobilda rule of everything being 8 millimeters apart. Now, for the holes themselves, I use the hole to in, uh, in Inventor, it's also in Fusion, for modeling. And the thing to remember about when you're working with Gobilda is that their screws are always 4mm in diameter. So that means the actual screw portion of the screw is 4mm. So what, when I when you 3D print parts, uh, they tend to expand. So I would recommend actually making your holes a bit bigger than what do you call than uh, 4 mm to 4.3 or 4.5 mm, as that will generally give you the best sort of width that will easily fit the screw while also allowing you to screw it into the actual piece itself for extra stability. Because if you make it like 4.2, 4.1 to 4 mm, you'll usually have to drill it so that the screw actually fits. but So now I'm going to show how this would fit onto an uh, actual Gobilda piece. So here I have the chassis assembly our team made, and these three parts in the center, these are all Gobilda pieces. So I'm going to just show how this part 4 fits onto this chassis assembly. So if I just grab a constraint, and let's say I wanted to put a screw that goes through here and here. And then I will constrain them on the bottom as well, so that it actually fits. But anyway, as you can see, each of those holes corresponds perfectly with the hole in the actual Gobilda piece. So essentially, by knowing this 8mm rule, you can build your pieces so that they always will fit with Gobilda, regardless of what pieces you use in Gobilda. So this works for literally any piece in Gobilda, so you could put a servo on this, you could put a pulley on this, Anything that Kabila uses is that A and rule. So now if you wanted to 3D print this, what you would do for Inventor, what you would do is you just click export as a CAD format, and then you'd select an STL and probably high quality with the options over here. In Fusion 360, what you would do is you go through to A360 and you could download the actual part uh, part file there. It's uh, it's the export option. It looks like a little arrow over a dash, and it basically just gives you a list of options to a uh, file formats to export in, and you would just export in that. And then the STL, you can just put it, slice it, and then print it on your 3D printer. So other than that, there's really not much more to know about well modeling with Go Builder parts with 3D printed parts, other than really I guess knowing how to do adaptive sketching. So for example, like, okay, I don't know why that went off to the uh, Using uh, adaptive sketching allows you to basically build parts that wouldn't normally coincide with the Go Builder parts, but you can build parts to any way do it. So, for example, for this mount, I used adaptive sketching 
to make the four attachments on the bottom using a projection of the actual grid plate this would go on. So, for example, if I can just find the sketch, here it is. Here we have a projection of the actual grid plate, and this tells me where all the holes will go, so I know exactly where to put the screws and the holes and stuff like that. So essentially, adaptive sketching allows you to make parts like the outtake that we made for our team before, without having to build it from the ground up where we constrain from the go builder parts first, because we could just build this part first and then constrain this to this and this. So other than that, there's really not much more to know, but basically just remember the 8 mm rule and you should be golden. So closing off, essentially Gobilda or modeling with Gobilda is just essentially knowing what you need to do and what parts you're going to use. For example, for these arms we made for our intake, I modeled them so that I knew that they would fit bearings exactly because I knew the diameter of the bearings, things like that that allow you to really speed up your process and be far more efficient and accurate than you would be have been before. But basically, modeling with Gobilda, it's very simple, but it just expands so much that it seems complex. So yeah, that's basically it. See you all next time. Uh, if there's any questions about what I said and basically covered, I guess, uh, just feel free to ask them in the comments, and I'll try to answer them or make another video about them.